Hi there, I just want to talk you through the use of one of these little beauties. It's a Bushnell NatureView HD trail cam. What does it do? It records either video or stills of anything that moves in front of it by day or by night. Let's talk you through the various parts. First of all, the visible parts on the outside of this weatherproof box, the lens, the uh, passive infrared sensor, this bit here, and this is an infrared light. It's actually called a black light for good reason, because it looks black and even when it's on, you can't see a dull red glow. Let's go inside. The battery compartment, the screen, which is used both for the menu and for reviewing any of the clips that you may have recorded, and then the control buttons. So let me talk you through the use of it. Well, first of all, um, what does the camera come with? Uh, it doesn't come with batteries. I like using lithium where possible, but alkaline like these will do. And people say, how long do they last? On the um, information that comes with the camera, it says up to a year. Well, that's if it's not taking photographs and it's not um, doing any video. It can just sit on standby for a year. If it's doing loads of video at night, obviously it lasts a lot less. But they last really well. You'd be surprised. I've had these standing in the field for months before now without needing a battery replacement. And it doesn't come with a memory card. You're going to want uh, an SD card and you want this to have a fast write speed, especially if you're shooting video, because uh, it's uh, a lot of data pumping into here. It goes into the SD card slot at the bottom. And then you start by switching to setup. Wait for it to just go past the Bushnell logo and then press menu. And the first uh, menu page is the mode, that's camera, which means still camera, video. Mm, means video, speaks for itself, and hybrid. That means it'll take a still picture and then run the video. I like to use either or, to be honest with you, because the hybrid means that you might get a still picture, but by the time it's running a video, the animal's already gone. So I'm gonna click this to video. Then you scroll across to the next bit of the menu. This is actually only relevant to still images, eight megabyte, five megabyte, three megabytes. I stick it on eight megabyte if I am gonna take stills. Then you have the image format, that's full screen or widescreen. The widescreen looks cool, uh, but it's a clipped version of the full screen. So I like to shoot full screen, and then if I want to clip it in post-production afterwards, I will. Then you have the capture number. This relates to still pictures, so that when there's a trigger episode, something moves in front of the passive infrared, it will take one, two, or three pics. Doesn't relate to video, because it's not gonna take one, two, or three videos. I set mine to one because I don't particularly want to have three pics of the same thing in the first burst. IR LED control, that's the infrared LED control. Now that simply means how much light is being pumped out by the infrared light. Uh, this is quite a, a new innovation by Bushnell to their trail cams, and it means that if something is very close to the camera, you can set it to low, and that way it's not burning out horribly if the creature or the subject is very, very close to the camera. If you set it to high, that means that creatures in the distance will show up in the infrared light, but anything really close is going to be really, really bright. I've got this one set to low. Camera input name. I don't give mine names, but if you ran several cameras at any one time, particularly for research purposes, you would name each camera and you'd know exactly when you got back to looking at all of the data, which camera was where, because you'd have kept notes on precisely that. Then you come to video size, you've got three choices. Uh, the lowest resolution, 640 by 360, the highest, 1920 by 1080, that's full HD. That's what I want to use when I'm running it on video. That's what I leave it on. Why would you want the lower res? Simply so you can get more information onto an SD card, you can get more film clips onto the SD card, but they're going to be lower quality. Video length, that can scroll from one second up to 60 seconds. I've got mine set at 30 seconds. To alter it, you just simply scroll up or down. So I've got 31, 32, 33, all the way up. If I want to set it to 45 seconds, there we go, 45 seconds. That's all I have to do. Next one, interval. That's how long a gap there is between either um, video triggers or by still uh, picture triggers, anywhere from one second up to 60 minutes. That means that the camera will take a photograph and then you can leave it for a whole hour before it'll take another one, regardless of what's moving in front and just about anything in between. I tend to set mine at one second because I want to see everything that happens in front of the camera, even if it's the same animal moving around repeatedly. Sensor level. This is about the passive infrared sensor and how it reacts to movement in front of it. Low, normal, high or auto. 
Bit of a piece of string this, how do you know how sensitive you want it to be? If you think the camera is going to be set in an area where there's a lot of movement, like grass waving, um, maybe leaves blowing all the time and lots of temperature shift, then you might set it to low. If you think it's a really flat, clear area like a path or an open area like a lawn, you might set it to high. So even a mouse that's trotting around in the background triggers it. Normal speaks for itself, doesn't it? Middle of the road. And auto means it just hunts around for whatever movement is going on at the time. So let's leave it at normal. Uh, night view shutter. This is the shutter speed uh, during the night, the, the night views whilst it's working with infrared. If you set it to high, the motion is likely to be frozen, but the lighting is going to be that bit darker. If you set it to low, there'll be a slower shutter speed, more light coming in, but it does mean that movement is going to be blurred. So um, medium is a nice compromise there. That's relevant to still photographs, not to video. Um, camera mode, you can set it to work only by day, only by night or 24 hours. That's your choice. I can't think why you'd want one or the other rather than 24 hours. I leave mine on 24 hours. Format. Important this, but before you start using your SD card, make sure you format it. The moment you execute a format, you wipe everything off the card. TV output in the UK and Europe, most of Europe, you use the PAL system, P-A-L, uh, in America and elsewhere, NTSC, you can use this camera in any, any of those territories. Um, Timestamp, that's whether or not you see the time and date physically stamped onto the picture or the video with, a, with, with writing. That's useful if you want to monitor the action of an animal. Really good for studies, not so good for the aesthetic. So again, it's a choice. You can have it on or off. I leave it off most of the time for the videos. Um, set the clock and then set the field scan. The field scan is effectively a time lapse. It will take a photograph when you give it instructions to do so, every, every minute, every 10 minutes, every hour. And then that's quite funky, particularly looking over a big area where you might have deer moving in the background or a fox trotting through that might not otherwise trigger the passive infrared sensor. Set video sound, I always have the sound on. Why wouldn't you want to? I certainly want the sound on when there are animals moving around in front. And then default, if you hit default, it just goes all back to factory settings. Once you've set all the parameters on the menu, simply uh, slide the switch on the bottom left up to on, and then close the camera, put it in the position you want on the ground spike or on a tree, and away you go. There's one other feature on the um, Bushnell HD Nature View that I want to show you, and it's these. They, it comes with additional lenses, the um, 460 and the 250 mil lens both of which change the focus on the lens. So the 460 means that instead of the standard focus setting, which is from about a metre and a half, maybe two metres away to infinity, now you can focus from about 50 centimetres to about a metre and a half. And that's great if the camera's on the ground, maybe looking at badgers or foxes feeding, something like that. And then the 250 millimetre lens, this one, makes it possible to focus closer still to within about 50 centimetres or so. And that's super if you want the camera to be watching, say, a bird table, something like blue tit visiting the bird feeder, that kind of thing. So it really is a versatile piece of kit. I hope you enjoy using yours. Have fun.